for the October 14th Policy and Planning Commission meeting at 6.31 p.m. Uh, due to the virtual format of today's meeting, I'd like to start by providing some guidelines. First, participants uh, attending by computer and others who may be attending by phone. For all meeting attendees, please speak clearly and pause frequently. State your name each time before speaking. Mute your microphone when not speaking. If you have technical issues, try joining the meeting using a different device such as a smartphone or tablet or use the call-in information in the meeting invite to call into the meeting. Uh, an overview for tonight's meeting will be holding a public hearing and making recommendations on the 2021 Comprehensive Plan Amendments. And But first, we're going to go ahead and make attendance. So, Kristen, can you please call roll? And yes, I will. Sarah Bader? Here. Nina Milligan? Here. Nina, your mic is very quiet. Hello, um, can you hear me? I'm here. You're very quiet. Very so, quiet. I might yes. unplug this and just go back. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, Matt Monahan? Here. Joy Lewis? Here. Jason Boyce? Here. Richard Zaragoza? Here. And Ron Fall? Here. All are present. Excellent. Very good. And next is we're going to go ahead and approve the uh, meeting minutes from September 23rd, 2021. And are there any corrections to the many uh, meeting minutes? Okay, hearing none, meeting minutes are approved. And Kristen, let's go ahead and open the meeting up for public comment um, before we start the, the discussion. Uh, go ahead. Do we have anybody uh, from the general public who wants to speak tonight? I have someone who signs that wants to speak in the public hearing. However, I'm not sure about um, in public comment. So if there's anyone who would like to speak during public comment part and not the public hearing part, would you please either raise your hand or star three? I'm not seeing anyone. Okay. All right. Uh, so I guess we formally close public uh, comment tonight because this is a hearing. Uh, next on the agenda item is the public hearing itself. And we're going to talk about the proposed 2021 comprehensive plan and zoning and map amendments. Um, Kristen, uh, our senior planner, will present the proposed 2021 amendments and zoning amendments. And Kristen, the floor is yours. So what, what are you all seeing right now? We're your seeing your window. presentation, but also your, your full screen. That's what I thought. It won't, it switched on me. There's no button to, let me try this again. I apologize, one second. I had this all set up before the meeting. Okay, I think this is what you all are gonna have to see. Okay. Preston, you may be able to click on the slideshow and do the start from beginning on the very top next to the the animation transition animation right next to it. There's a slideshow thing. Well, I'm Try clicking that. on slideshow down here. It's on slideshow. Um, well, this is what you get to see tonight. Um, Actually, you know what I'm going to do. 
I apologize. Um, let me do it this way. You guys are seeing everything I'm missing. There we go. Yay! Work? It worked. Okay, excellent. Just, the, I know that there are two, like two or three slides on here that would have been way too small for you all to see the other way. So I needed to make sure this happened the right way. So yes, our proposed 2021 comprehensive plan and zoning map amendments. So tonight we are going to present and then we are going to take testimony and you all will deliberate. And then hopefully you will make a recommendation to the city council. So first we're gonna talk about the land use element. In particular, right now, we're going to talk about data. And I should apologize. I did not realize that when I converted this to PDF that all the track changes went away. So um, luckily they're here and we can talk about those now if you'd like. So first uh, data, as you all may recall in 2016, the city council asked us to start tracking our units toward our state adopted 2031 housing and jobs targets. And so this is where this table and the next one that you'll see came from. Every year we submit information regarding units that have been completed and units, units that have been permitted to the Office of Financial Management. And which, um, I thought it was an emergency, I apologize, um, to the Office of Financial Management. And then they come back to us confirming our number of housing units and our population and our households. So this year, uh, from April 2nd, 2020 to April 1st of 2021, we gained or completed 315 new housing units, which took us to 17,739 units, and it took us over our target to 104%. Our target was 5,750, and we are now at 5,995. As for jobs targets, we went the opposite direction. So this one we actually get from the employee, employ, Employment Security Department every year, and it runs with the calendar year. So it's January through December of 2020. And we don't provide them with information. They give us, we provide them with some, but um, they are the ones who really are the data keepers for this. We lost over 3,000 jobs in 2020, likely due to COVID. That's just um, my thought on that, not a fact. But that took us down from almost 53% of our target to about 38% of our target. That's okay. Um, we're not, we're, we're uh, there are others in that same boat with us. This year, we also, as part of the growth capacity study for the state and growth targets, did our capacity study for the city. We have about 551 acres of land available for residential property just over 12,000, which equals approximately 12,000 units, new units. And we have 257 acres for commercial property, or actually I should say non-residential property because that includes industrial as well and mixed use, which totals about 21,000 new jobs that we could accommodate. One is area, one is what the development allows. I mentioned OFM and that we provide them data and they come back to us with housing units, households and population projections. And that's what this table shows. So we have, as I mentioned, 17,739 units, just over 17,000 households and households are the number of housing units that are estimated to be occupied. And then our population and then group quarters are counted in with that too to give us almost 40,000 people, which is crazy because when I started here, there were 11,212. That was in 2001. Um, I should let you know, this might, it might change. We got a note from the state the other day that the census data has just come out. And because everything had to be done electronically this year and no one could go door to door, some of this might change, but I think we'll probably wind up reconciling that next year because we won't get the data until November. So moving on to land use designations and zoning. 
we have nine parcels that we're looking at. And the first is Blackberry Park. All of these were acquired by the city. This one was given back to was given to us by King County. It's been a park for a long time. It's currently zoned single family small lot. It uh, is has a land use designation of low density residential. Our proposed designation for it is community facilities recreation with a or that's the zoning with a, with a designation of community facilities. It would remain as a park. And the question was asked last time if the parks department had started working with the neighborhood to improve the park because there will be improvements. And yes, that process has since started. I should note that I have both Jennifer Fink here from the parks department and Megan Curtis Murphy, who's now a consultant for us um, to answer questions later on if you, if you have some. The next one are the Newport area designations. You all actually saw these when we took a tour not too long ago, but two parcels. Both are currently have a multifamily residential land use designation and a village residential zoning designation. The property on the left right here is proposed to be uh, community facilities recreation and we'll have a park in this area. Uh, seven parking spaces, one for handicap, and then this area will remain as open space right here. Lastly, we have six parcels and it's the Harvey Manning Park Extension. This property was purchased several years ago. It was called the Bergsma property, um, but now it's proposed to be the Harvey Manning Park Extension because here is Harvey Manning Park and there will be trails that connect um, through this area. So th these three parcels are zoned single family estates. These three parcels are zoned single family suburban. They are all designated uh, low density residential and they are all proposed to be community facilities open space. This is part of, we used some King County funds to help pay for this, and part of that agreement was that it would be open space. Should those be approved, any or all, the land use designation map and the land use element will also be changed. Reflect that. So moving on to Old Town. Old Town, uh, we proposed just to do the implementation tables and status tables, but we did find a couple of changes that needed to be made here. One was this was just simplifying this policy to say facilitate mobility options to improve access for Old Town. And the other was it said strive for the mobility master plan to identify efforts. It was before it had been written, now it's been written. So we just changed it to implement the mobility master plan. But to what we were originally supposed to do, we updated status table and you'll recall you can't see it here we had it in two different sections we had the list of immediate of all the actions and then we had a table of all the actions so instead of duplicating we're just going to remove the list and put it the whole table in there so it's one space um, we just updated it with things like we have minor challenges with some of these this will be done during the title 18 update because we looked and said landscapes not just for old town it's for the whole city so we're going to update that then couldn't do uh Impervious surface because we need to wait and see what the storm and surface water master plan says about doing that. We did complete the architectural design standards for the SFD zones. And then let's see, moving on, just these are just some samples. I didn't pull them all. Uh, we just updated these to ongoing, some are complete, some are on track and ongoing. Um, and then longer term, look, we've had either, we're, we're doing them, they're either complete or they're ongoing. So we moved a couple around as well. Capital facilities element, we were asked by parks and city council to update this because there were some things that were left off and some things that were misnamed. So for example, the Tiger Mountain Community High School was no longer Community High School, it's actually Gibson Eck High School, so we changed that name. We added Green Barn, Julius Bone Pool, the Senior Center and the Community Center. And we did have these two new schools lumped together and it sort of looked like they were named. So we just clarified that there are two separate new schools that have not yet been named. So those are the updates there. Lastly, moving on to land use element, climate change goals and policies. As you all know, goals and policies, these are just like the mobility master plan, just like the parks plan, just like the utilities plan. The goals and policies from those plans are pulled and put into the comprehensive plan so that those other plans are implementable because the comprehensive plan is really the guiding document and the legal document for those. 
So you all saw these on the 23rd, actually. And these will be included. I'm not gonna go everyone. We have uh, Megan here later if you'd like to ask any questions about these. Um, but we did um, clarify here that we were decreasing energy use. We, we whoops, sorry, clarify that energy use is actually natural gas and electricity, you all asked. And also made sure that, ooh, longer than I thought, made sure that emergency services would be available to conserve 100% of Issaquah's population and not just 50% of Issaquah's population. So just to let you know, this will go to the council study session. If you all make a recommendation tonight, it will go to the council study session on November 9th. And then on December 6th, council would potentially take action on this. That is my presentation. Thank you, Kristen. And so for commissioners, are do you have any clarifying questions you would like to ask? Go ahead and put it in the chat. I have to open chat. Chat's blank. Excellent. Joy's to the rescue. So, Joy, uh, Commissioner Joy uh, has the first question. Thank you, Chair Paul. Commissioner Joy Lewis here. Um, since we just saw Kay, it's a little easy to ask this question. I was curious why shelter wasn't called out um, on uh, K1 when we're, um, like you mentioned, we now upped the number to 100% of our 40,000 residents, which is nice. We don't have to pick and choose between them, but um, shelter was specifically not mentioned. And I was curious if there was a policy choice for that or why that was left out. Sure, this is Megan Curtis Murphy. Um, so originally the last time that we talked about this, um, the target that we were discussing was just shelter oriented. So that's where we were at that 50% number. Um, but in taking feedback from uh, community members, boards and commissions, we wanted to look a little bit more holistically and reach that 100%. So we're still looking um, at the 50% the for, for shelter right now, um, but making sure that we would be able to have all the food and water and other services available for 100% of the population. Um, so expected that we wouldn't necessarily need buildings available for 100% of the population, but there's uh, situations where maybe we would need food, water, those sorts of resources. Is it possible, do you guys think about adding a sentence or language to be able to at least have the policy include where we're at and where our intentions are with shelter? It's just to, have think, that to go from the complete drop off, I was just noticed it. Yeah, um, great point. I think um, this is one of those targets that's really pretty new for the city and in, um, you know, something that we're just starting to talk about now, we have a new emergency manager on board who just started, I believe, late August. Um, so we've been starting to have these conversations and he is already busy updating a bunch of different plans. So I think he's gonna be looking at those numbers a little bit more, but for the purposes of the climate action plan that we thought that the, the food and water um, resources would be the mo most appropriate for this plan. But I think we'll, be able to see those other numbers in some of the more um, emergency services targeted uh, plans. Okay, I'd certainly like to throw up a red flag saying that I appreciate having that, even if it is a, a separate um, target, right, that we're not anticipating um, meeting that same capacity need, that it is that language is still present somewhere in the document, so thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Joy. Uh, Commissioner uh, Jason, you have the floor for clarification. Thank you, Chair Fell, Commissioner Voice. Mine's just a point of clarification. So on page 20 of 86, I know these numbers are kind of funny. Um, that's our jobs table. I believe it was L3. So just so I'm aware, it, there was some, some reading in there that kind of mentioned that all of our cities are having these um, jobs numbers issues, I think. Uh, senior planner Leeson had just alluded to it. So am I understanding this right? Basically, we've revised that number down from 20,000 to 15,000. Is that correct? That's our new 2031 goal it is 15,000 new jobs, not 20,000. No, our 20,000 is still our goal. It's still our target, our 2031 target. It's just that we are only at 37% of meeting that and not 38 or not 53%. Our target remain the same. We're just not as close to it as we used to be. 
Okay. I thought I saw something that mentioned. There it is, page 20. Oh, I think you may be thinking of potential proposed job targets. Right. There was some number that had mentioned this number has been revised down to 70, 7,500. Right. Not yet. It's proposed right now in right. what's submitted to the Growth Management Planning uh, Council, GMPC, and King County, but it hasn't been approved yet. Is that what the city's going for? Is That's the reduction? Going. That's what we're going for. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's pretty obvious. You look at the table, the Great Recession shows up, and then the pandemic shows up. So it's... It, I think the culprit's there in black and white, but okay. That was uh, one. And then just real quickly, um, I noticed that on one of it, uh, page 14 of 86, it says edit policy F1, but then your slide just showed K1. Uh, page 14 of 86 clarified B1. And again, it, it showed up on your slide as G1. So is this just what happens when the climate, the Issaquah climate pl plan gets taken? That's how those numbers are going to, Regear itself, right? Because yes. I was like, I was looking at these numbers. And I was like, where are the? I don't see it. And then I was like, oh, it's over here. Yeah, I apologize. I should have caught. That. Yes, the numbers change when they come into the comp plan because it has to mesh right. in with all the other policies that are already there. Okay. Sorry Thank you. That. That's okay. Okay, and thank you, uh, Commissioner Voice. Uh, are there any other questions? Commissioners. It looks like Commissioner Milligan has a clarification and a question. Uh, you're you're on mute. Muted. I'm unmuted, so I hope if I can shout. Can you hear me at all? Yes. Okay. I, I take my question back because Commissioner Lewis asked it so well. Okay, and thank you, uh, Commissioner Milligan. Uh, any other clarifying questions or comments? Okay. Um, I guess now we will go ahead and open up the public hearing or the uh, open up for public comment at 6.54. I was about to say public hearing. <laughs> we are in a public hearing. Um, so, Kristen, do we have any members from the public that would like to speak? We do. Um, first, we have Ann Fletcher. I'm going to make you a panelist. And you are unmuted. You can turn on your camera if you would like. Good evening. My name is Ann Fletcher. I live at 255 Southeast Andrews Street. And I'm a, a resident since 1987 and a member of the People for Climate Action Issaquah chapter. Uh, to all the Planning Policy Commission members, uh, I would like to talk about the comp plan amendments in the land use element. Uh, first of all, element E. Uh, we are on the right track, I think, by replacing the current climate goals and policies in the comprehensive plan with those from the draft climate action plan. And I too had to make that switch on the numbers that you were talking about. <laughs> so my written comments, uh, I think had both. So it's probably a little confusing to some of you, <laughs> but I, I, it, they're, they're high overarching goals and I believe they are better than the other ones because they are much clearer, more specific and actionable. And they will be useful to the city departments because they are now working together on climate and they have many interconnected plans and programs and I think they will be really helpful to the city departments. They expand on important, um, oh, uh, I'm going to go back. Uh, they also reflect some updates in knowledge about how to mitigate and adapt to climate, climate change. And they expand on important areas that are relevant to climate change that we didn't, we didn't, we weren't as aware of before. Things are changing fast. The uh, F, uh, the number F, uh, the bench, they, it benchmarks carbon 
emission reduction goals, uh, which I believe was suggested. And um, I think that's really great to have that as an overarching goal. And it also brought in community involvement, which was requested. So I think that's wonderful. Um, it also has a section G uh, where there are goals to increase energy efficiency and decarbonization in both current and new buildings. That's our biggest carbon emitter. So that is a really great goal. In uh, H, we're promoting better systems for current and new neighborhoods to use cars less and, and promoting transit and electric vehicles. Transportation is our second biggest emitter. So it's great to have a strong goal there. Um, in section I, uh, not only are we trying to do something about our, our uh, uh, landfill, uh, which is a complicated area um, and it's more complicated, but the overall goals I think are okay. The, um, the, the one part that I was pleased to see was in there was about advancing careful consumption of carbon emitting products, um, because that's, that's the first step. Uh, and then if you, once you have them, you have to get, get rid of them. So then um, Jay brings in the terms carbon capture and carbon sequestration and a stretch goal of 55% tree canopy in the natural systems area. And uh, in a new section is for community resilience and well being, which I heard you talking about. So I think overall, it's a really um, great to have that aligned, something that we've been um, wondering how that was gonna be done and looks like the city's found a way to do it. So we really appreciate that. And I wanted to mention elements A through D real quickly. Um, they, uh, you, you just went through the growth management information and um, it was interesting that those four things um, are all factors that will affect our carbon emissions. And the fifth element, the new climate goal as some policies is, needs to be really strong enough to address both our current and our new growth emissions. So that was made really clear in this report. Um, and I think that, that just looking at the fact that we have already exceeded our 2031 housing goal uh, units, uh, that, was a, that was amazing to me. Uh, and I'm wondering, um, we seem to be growing pretty fast. Are we able to keep up with the needed infrastructure and properly protect our environment with that? And with a new goal of 3,500 more units, uh, if we meet that early, I guess we could increase it again. And I guess it makes me wonder, well, how well are we managing our growth in our growth management? Um, the jobs going down, uh, the lower goal is a reality. Um, and uh, the, it means that people will reside here if we keep adding units, but they will drive somewhere else to work possibly. And uh, I, I guess I wanted to mention that when we figure, I don't know how we figure out capacity for growth and how they figure out the acres, but the more buildings and accompanying cars will add to our carbon emissions unless exceptionally strong building and transportation mitigation actions are, are um, taken. And then the other thing that I learned about last night at the environmental board is the tree code and um, the predicted development in elements A through D will result in a continuous erosion of our tree canopy, um, which supplies shade, carbon capture, stormwater control and wildlife habitat. And uh, unless we protect the rest of our trees and plant significantly uh, and significantly plant more trees in other places. Um, so I was wondering, do we have a plan for that? Because it's pretty clear that we are having a big impact, not only from what we have now, but also this big growth that we're gonna continue to have. 
So thank you very much and thank you for your service to the community. Thank you, Ms. Fletcher. Uh, Kristen, do we have any additional members of the public that would like to speak? We have one other member of the public. And if you would like to speak, if you go ahead and raise your hand, that would be great. And if you can't find, figure out how to do that, which I never can, um, you can just message me too. No, there's no one else who would like to speak. Okay, uh, very good. So we'll go ahead and close the public here, our public comments at 7.02. And I guess now we will move on to the proposed motion is to recommend um, approval of the proposed 2021 comprehensive plan and zoning map amendments as presented. Would anyone like to make a motion for that? Uh, Jason, you're on mute. You have a comment, Chair Fowl. I did have a question, though, but uh, I'll go after the comment. Just a quick question. Okay. Uh, Commissioner uh, Lewis, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair Fall and Vice Chair uh, as well. Uh, Commissioner Joy Lewis here. Um, I was under the um, impression that we were going to be doing our uh, discussion right now, Chair. It's how you had how it been laid out before. So I'm going to jump. Some comments. I'm going to jump yeah. in here. The way that we're the way that it's supposed to be. So we're trying to fix that. Is that a motion is made, and then a motion is seconded, and then you may deliberate, and then you can make a recommendation. So that's that's the order of things. The way they're supposed to be, we just haven't always followed it. So we're trying to follow it now. So what if we were amending the document? Then we, the motion would then need to be amended. Right. And then you would vote on the amendment to the document. You would vote on the proposed amendment to the motion. Yes. Well, then I will wait for when we're ready to, do, to deliberate. Uh, but I, since I have the floor, I'll go ahead and make a motion uh, to adopt the land use element. Um, and the comprehensive plan as submitted by staff. Okay. I'll second. Nope. Second and third. All right, we'll go with uh, Matt Monahan for second. Okay, uh, all in favor? Actually, we wanna first deliberate on this. Okay, now that we have a uh, an active, sorry, this whole thing process has changed a little bit. So I'm learning as we go as well. Uh, so now that we have a, a the amendment has a second on it, we're gonna go ahead and open it for deliberation. Okay, and uh, let's see, Commissioner Voice, would you like to voice your comment? Thank you, Chair Fell. I just had a, a quick clarifier, but it, it really doesn't pertain to what we're doing now. So it was more of a question about how how staff figures out acreage and jobs. That one kind of struck me as interesting. So I don't know if anyone can answer that real quickly. It really doesn't pertain to anything. This was more for my information or perhaps somebody out there who's going to watch this later who's going, I out per square foot, how many jobs is per square foot? I can answer square that. Feet need to get one job. I can answer that. So acreage is its land area, pretty much. So... You know, if you want to be really straightforward, you look at all the single family acreage and no commercial can really go there. No non-residential can go there. So that's your residential acreage. It gets a little more confusing when you break it into the mixed use zones, whereas maybe you, based on what's happened in the past, 40% of that acreage might be developed as residential and 60% might be developed as commercial or non-residential. So that's how that mixed use is broken up. And it's based on, it's based on history in that area. But Acreage is just what's on the ground. So when you go to determine units or jobs, units is easier. It's based on what can be developed on that property. So if that property can only go to 25 feet and one dwelling unit per five acres or four and a half dwelling units per acre, then you estimate, you know, based on that, I have this many acres that are zoned that way. So this is the number of units that could go there. And you look at both vacant land and redevelopable land. And redevelopable land, there are a few factors that are involved. You look at, you know, how much when the property was built, 
and the likelihood that it you know could be potentially taken down and replaced and maybe there's only one parcel on one house on a space now where it could have two or you look at mixed use and you say okay well this actually can go up to 85 feet and it has this is the far this could have about this many units on there so you know we work with king county and they have a formula out there too that helps us determine that um, as for jobs, it's a little different. Jobs is um, per square foot, per employee per square foot and by type. So an industrial job or an industrial building may have one employee per 750 square feet. So you look at your industrial zone land, what the FAR or what the development regulations allow, see what could go there max. You actually don't go to the max. You kind of go a little below that because max isn't likely going to happen. It's going to be, market's not dictating that right now. Um, and then commercial, retail is more like 450, one person per 450 square feet. And then offices like one person per 300 square feet. And now there's COVID. And I know somebody's going to ask me and nobody knows yet what the effects of COVID are going to be on this. And it's a 20 year cycle. So they're going to come back and visit it in two years and may change up some of the numbers. Yeah, based on, does that help? Thank you, Senior Plan and Lisa, and it does help. Appreciate okay. it. Good. Okay, and now we have a, well, Joy, did you want to go ahead and present your question or your comment or your? I do, thank you, Chair Paul. Um, I want to stick right now since, um, since Jason brought up um, our jobs and housing numbers, I think this is a good place if we want to have a discussion about this um, to start with that before I get to the land use um, policy section. Um, you know, I think we were all expecting that there was going to be a hit. And I think we all uh, who have been the people who have been charting these numbers knew that we were already pretty aggressive on our housing numbers. So it wasn't a huge surprise. At the same time, it's concerning to see such a discrepancy, right? We should be able to take that 12% hit a little bit easier because we were so far regressed already on our numbers, um, on jobs specifically. So what my concern is, is that I really want to see as we're addressing the incoming housing capacity numbers that we'll be getting for our next target, is that we address how we're going to be doing it right. And I think specifically looking at the jobs that Issaquah needs to reach its 2031 goal means being able to say, well, what kind of housing are we getting? And I'd like to hear more from the city, not necessarily in this meeting, but I wanna throw up the issue of saying, how are we going to address that missing middle? How are we going to get the housing that we need to support the jobs that we're trying to get? Um, and not having that discrepancy that's been existing in the housing we're getting versus the jobs we're trying to get. So um, I think that it's something that's worth having further discussions at another time. And I just wanna bring up that concern um, of basically of saying that that missing middle continues to be missing. And I think that it's closely aligned to the jobs that we're wanting and hoping to fill that they're pretty closely interconnected. Um, and I'm going to wait, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to jump in real quick before you moved on to the land use. Sorry. I was I was going to wait on the land use because I wanted to hear if anybody else had any comments on it. So I will re-enter my okay. space in a minute because I want to. I think this is a, a a good conversation for us to be having. And okay. Um. So first, you had mentioned that we were off track last time on our jobs. We actually weren't. We were halfway through the twenty-year cycle, and we were at about fifty-three percent. So we were actually right on track almost toward meeting our 2031 targets. And this was just a setback. Um, and when we get our new targets, it's not going to be added to the 20,000. We start over, it's a reset. So we start with whatever we have and we don't have to do what we didn't hit plus 7,500. It's just the 7,500 if that's what's approved. So it's actually going to be fewer jobs if, if that is what our target is than what would be remaining for the 2031 target, if that makes sense. That's if we make our target, right? We we far and away made our housing target. What but we when we to? talk about, we're still looking at making our 2031 target, right? We're not, we no. already know we're gonna miss it. So, right, we know we're gonna miss it. And it actually starts over as soon as these are adopted. And in 2024 is when the targets would take over, we start over. So if we haven't hit our targets, that's okay. 
And, you know, part of it was that when we did our first targets back in 2006, we had anticipated that three huge parcels of land up in the Highlands were going to be Microsoft. They had options up there and then they left. So, you know, we knew we, we, we weren't going to hit what was adopted in 2006. It wasn't likely, but that's okay. We reevaluate, we reset, and then we start over in 2024 with whatever our new adopted targets are. So if we didn't hit them, that's fine. Because a big part of why we were at our 53% was due to the cost, was, is due to Costco, right? The Costco, Costco partnership, right? So when we start looking at the jobs that we need to be able to support our, um, our live, play, work in Issaquah, right? Um, it, it certainly took, um, it was nice to be able to add that into our numbers, but it didn't necessarily factor into what the jobs are needed in the community for us to be sustaining a healthy population. So um, it's nice to be able to reset our numbers and to say this one didn't work, so let's find the next one that does. But I think that there's a connection that needs to be figured out between gaining the space for middle, um, middle income jobs and middle income housing that hasn't been adequately addressed. We've done a nice job of trying to address affordable housing and the market continues to give us very nice and very expensive housing in Issaquah as well. But being able to connect these two numbers is something I'd like to see more from the city about how we're actually saying, how do we, how do we make this work? You Again, not, so not, I'm not expecting, <laughs> you know, you know it's, it's, it's one of our, the whole on our, it's one of our <laughs> topics on our work plan is, and as part of our housing implementation plan is, or our housing action work plan, housing strategy work plan, there we go, um, is missing middle. So it's, it's absolutely on our radar. We talk about it often um, and hopefully it'll be addressed sooner rather than later. And I know that, you know, as I've mentioned it before, but when I was talking targets with the city council, they wanna come back and have another discussion about infrastructure and services and everything meeting our growth. Our capacity is a lot bigger than our proposed targets are. Um, we want to make sure we meet all of it. So they want to have more conversations about that as well. Thank you, Kristen. You're welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Lewis. Um, actually, on the jobs uh, target, I know uh, Commissioner Milligan is next here for a question, but I want to inject here. Uh, work from home is a changing dynamic. How are we going to prepare for possible work from home? And would that be counted in the jobs that were here in Issaquah. Um, and at Microsoft, a lot of contractors and a lot of people are working from home. They live here in Issaquah. Would they be counted possibly in the numbers? And if they're not, should we be including them in the numbers so that we have the infrastructure to support those work from home people? They are counted. They, they are, are counted. counted. Yes. So if they are counted, then our numbers should actually be going up instead of down because of all the work from home people. Well, except the people actually lost their jobs during COVID or left their jobs during COVID. Now, again, this is me speaking, but based on what happened in 2020, um, I'm, I'm going to guess that that's probably what it was. How do we collect that work from home information? That is something that needs to be figured out. Um, and I'm going to leave that up to demographers and the Employment Bureau. But as I mentioned earlier, the King County and the state will go back in about two years and relook at how COVID affected, how, you know, how people working at home affected the job market and even the housing market and the commutes. That kind of thing but it's just too early for them to figure out what effect that's had so far understood okay uh i'm going to go ahead and open the floor up to uh commissioner milligan she had a question well really i was commenting why i went offline there but i will take the moment if you give it to me i first i'd like clarification about what was included in the motion can someone reiterate for me are we talking about the jobs housing and the motion yet, or are we just talking about the land use changes? Sorry, you cut out there for a little bit, but right now we've just, we're getting, um, there are questions about the jobs and housing targets. That's what we've been talking about. Yes, I understand what we're talking about. I just don't know what the motion is. So I'll oh, go ahead and the, the motion, 
motion was to approve the 2021 comprehensive plan and zoning map amendments as presented. So the no zoning map, not made. the um, chart for housing and jobs. It would be all of it. All of it. That includes the, the comprehensive it. plan and the zoning map. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. I didn't know if that was separated out into three sections as per our agenda. Okay. In that case, um, if you can hear me, okay. Okay. So you can hear me. Uh, I do want to comment because this is the opportunity to reiterate uh, some of the things that I think are important to the community in regards to our um, housing growth. Uh, we have um, repeated uh, interest in where we put our housing growth and uh, take this opportunity to folks that I'm keeping an eye on this and that our housing growth is intended to go into central Issaquah as per the central Issaquah plan. That's what we promised and should do it. Uh, the other is that we have uh, intentions, for sustainability and other issues to redevelop our parking lots rather than developing areas that have a lot of green space. For instance, our single family neighborhoods are also part of our green canopy and to redevelop single family would be antithetical to that goal. Also, I uh, want to point out that um, when we're talking about where our housing growth is, it is in the Central Issaquah Plan. We have um, excessive capacity to handle our growth targets, so there's no need to look any further. It would be a challenge uh, to, if we, the capacity is so much higher than our targets that uh, there should be no need to go elsewhere. And because transportation and uh, impacts from air pollution and um, other issues, transportation, traffic, convenience is also important to the community. It's another reason why we focus our growth in central Issaquah. So I'm just, this chart comes up, folks, and I'm going to keep looking at this, and you guys can keep helping me because pressures cities are to spread the development over in our single family neighborhoods and our attention of our city. So I'm supporting the motion and adopting the reports and the zoning. Just wanted to take an opportunity to say that. Appreciate the time. Thank you, Chair Paul. Thank you, Commissioner Milligan. And are there any other questions or comments? Or anyone wants to? I think, uh, Commissioner Lewis, you had uh, another comment that you wanted to bring up at a different time or bring that up now, or did you already cover that? Thank you, Chair Fall. I uh, wanted to go through the land use policy. I had a couple things. This is um, one of the best um, insights we've had um, to a couple of things that I wanted to clarify. I'm, uh, I'm really pleased, I should say, that we've had so many opportunities to view pieces and parts of this because seeing it together as a whole um, I think this comp plan is very successful. Um, I see a lot of amazing work that's gone into it. Um, I did want to point out, um, I suppose, on our packet, it's going to be page 32, and this is land use policy I-3. Um, I appreciated the introduction of the language that says, and reducing overall consumption. Um, and I was hoping that we could make that language a little beefier. If it were up to me, I think we'd say something like, while also reducing um, by saying and it, the way the sentence is framed, the um, production and materials and reducing overall consumption, it's its own separate concept, and yet it's thrown into the end of the sentence. And I think that having language that makes it a little bit stronger, we would benefit from it. Uh, so again, my my best suggestion was while also reducing to try to um, help that. I don't mind it sitting along with the policy, but that was something that I saw. The next one I'm going to go to is going to be uh, J1. Let's see if I can find it so I can give you the language. Okay. And on J1, I know everyone is going to want to gloss over this, but on J1, we have the 55% tree canopy coverage. What I think hasn't really been addressed is why staff said we met our target, we want to keep it at the 50%, and the public has pushed back and said we want a greater amount of tree canopy coverage, and so they put it at 55%. But I haven't actually seen any scientific data that's been presented, any kind of 
um, equation that says this is the right number. Why is it 55 versus 60 um, when we know that we need to be able to accommodate not only keeping the tree growth that we have, but planting more? Um, I would just like to be able to see uh, a greater backing behind what this number is. But I know that this is something that necessarily isn't something everybody wants to continue to talk about. It's nice that we have the extra 5%. So it's an easy, it feels like an easy win. But I do think that it's something that's worth talking about as we it comes before our commission quite frequently is the tree canopy coverage. The next thing I had was gonna be on section K and this gets into the compact schools. I really loved reading this section because it's something that we've talked a lot about. It's something that we've wanted to have further clarity about. And I think that there is room for improvement in this section. Uh, we know that when we're working with partners on this new proposed concept of how we're doing our schools, um, that having our policies laid out being very crystal clear uh, will aid us later on when we're actually trying to put together how we're going to be utilizing this. Um, for an example, I'd like to see on L10A, I'd like to have a stronger use of language to move towards banning. Oh, sorry, that's sorry, that's on 10. I'm uh, I'm on the compact schools, which is talking about, um, sorry, my notes got uh, together. Uh, so implementing policies throughout the municipal code uh, that are going to talk about shared resource language and to help buffer the idea, this is L6, that resource intensive activities need to collaborate and share and have mixed use facilities. I think that language is touched on, but I think it's something that we saw in the Providence Point community. We had many members of the community come to us and say their main issue is the issue of lights on fields, the space that's being taken up, and the school district wasn't willing to budge whatsoever on this. And so I think it's something that's going to be coming up with compact schools that I'd like to see greater language uh, really clarified on that. It's something that the community continues to talk to us about. And this is a great opportunity to be able to use this for doing compact schools. And then again, moving on to L10A, which is um, when we talk about uh, pesticide use, being able to have a stronger use of language to move towards banning the use of chemicals rather than just addressing them. I think it would be worth having stronger language there. So that's my my comments on the land use policy. And if anyone else has any comments on it, I'd love to hear. Thank you, Commissioner Lewis. Uh, are there any other additional comments or questions? Okay, I'm gonna start naming. Okay, uh, Commissioner Monahan, did you have any questions or comments you'd like to make? Not at this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Zaragoza, would you like to add anything? Nope. Thank you. And Commissioner Bader, would you like to add anything? No, thanks. All right. And uh, Commissioner Milligan. Commissioner Voice, you've been very quiet today. No, thanks, Chair. All right. Okay. Uh, so moving forward. Uh, I guess we will take a, we'll open this up for a vote. Um, if there's no further discussion, we will proceed to a vote on approving the proposed 2021 comprehensive plan and zoning map amendments as presented. There are no amendments to that. So I guess the next part here is, Kristen, will you please take a roll call vote? I will, but first I want to make a clarification. There was a note that Commissioner Lewis made regarding I-3 that she would like to include two words while also producing instead of just producing. And I, we need to hear from the commission on whether that's something that you want to do. And I don't think it needs to be an amendment, but it would be to the motion. It would be something that we would add to the findings of fact. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Lewis, would you like to make a... Uh... Um, uh, Kristen, you said a so just just a just a vote. Um, I, I don't think it's changing the motion, but it's just making a small change to add those two words to IK or um, pardon me, I three. I don't think it's an additional motion, but what I was opening up is the floor is to have anyone else see if they had any similar reactions when, and it doesn't sound like anybody else did since everyone since you went through the roll call, so. It was my suggestion. It sounds like I stand alone in it. So. Okay. 
Well, I want to clarify. Did anyone have, was anyone resisting to uh, Joy's comment? Because maybe we were all going along with it and saying, that sounds like a great idea. And I, I want to be clarifying. I'm not making, uh, not taking position here. Do we want to uh, support Joy in her, her changes, or do we want to move forward as the um, comprehensive plan was presented in its words? Uh, Commissioner Milligan? Uh, you're on mute. Up tonight. We're going to do a test on this, Kristen, later and try all my gear and see what works best in this platform. Uh, thank you, Chair Paul. I want to support Joy, but I do not want to amend motion because if I'm looking at the same language we're talking about, land use policy I-3, I believed in my, I support what you're saying, but the words and I think are strong enough. It's not saying or maybe something there. And I think that our words don't say and the words all I think it's fine the way it is, and I say that in support of what you say, not in a disagreement. Excellent. Okay. A uh, quick show and nods and uh, and for what uh, Commissioner Milligan had said. Excellent. All right. So um, with that being concluded, I guess now we will move on to the vote <laughs> for the proposed amendment or for the proposed uh, motion. So Kristen, do you want to go ahead and open up for a roll call vote? Sure. So the, this is Kristen. The motion on the table is to recommend approval of the proposed 2021 comprehensive plan and zoning map amendments as presented. And I will go ahead and call roll. Commissioner Lewis? Aye. Commissioner Milligan? Aye. Commissioner Boyce? Aye. Commissioner Monaghan? Aye. Commissioner Zaragoza? You're voting as a regular member tonight. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Bader? Aye. And Commissioner Fall? Aye. The vote is approved unanimously, 7 to 0. Okay, excellent. And so we will close that out and uh, we will open up for reports. So, Kristen, are there any reports the city would like to make tonight? I do not have any re reports. However, Minnie Dollywall is here, the Community Planning and Development Director, and she may have one. Uh, yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, you know, nothing major to report, but I just wanted to follow up with you uh, all. Um, you know, we discussed the uh, trees, landscaping, and open space uh, topics with you on September 9th. And we got a request from uh, the environmental board that they were they wanted to participate in the discussion. So we had a meeting with them yesterday um, that we shared the information we had presented to you and got some uh, good feedback from them. So uh, on those topics, um, additionally, um, uh, parks department, you know, parks board um, uh, has another meeting coming up on October 25th that they want to have a conversation about those topics, get a little bit better understanding. And so we're working on uh, presenting, um, you know, giving them an opportunity to ask questions uh, and such at, on those topics uh, on October 25th. So all of this is going to get folded back to you when you when we prepare the draft uh, document for you all to look at. But uh, I just wanted to kind of let you know that we are soliciting input um, on those topics uh, from other boards as well. Um, the uh, other thing I wanted to share was um, on Title 18, we had an affinity group meeting on uh, building and economic development topics. Um, and uh, in that, we reached out to property owners, developers, uh, people that had interacted with the city, architects, uh, and others uh, of their experiences um, and their 
um, a point of view uh, at a very high level. Obviously, we don't have the draft code ready, but uh, parking was discussed and you know there were multiple viewpoints on parking. What is the right parking? What is the impact of commercial spaces? So we're gathering all that input and um, we're going to prepare a summary of those uh, comments that we received from them. And when we come to you with those topics, we will include that information. Um, and the next on agenda for you all for Title 18 is zoning and land uses topic that we'll bring um, in a couple of weeks on October 28th. So we'll, we're continuing to work on that. We've had some good conversations with the Title 18 uh, ad hoc committee, three council members on zoning and uses and received their feedback. Um, so you will have some of their input in when we bring that back for your discussion. So that's all I have, uh, Kristen. I do have three other things sort of not related to council reports that I'd like to mention. One is that I was thinking during the meeting and I went back and I double checked in the transportation element. I actually below the comp plan policy number put the mobility master plan number as well in parentheses. I will do the same thing for the climate action plan and that will help. It will avoid some confusion. Second, we were supposed to hear goals and policies on the stormwater and surface water master plan. Tonight, for personal reasons, that had to be postponed a bit, but it's coming back on December 2nd. And then Title 18, you'll notice there were no comments this time included. We didn't forget. There weren't any. But we've started receiving them again, so those will be in your next packet. Okay? Just in case you're wondering. Thank you all very much. I do have a question or a feedback thing. If, um, I don't know at what point in the agenda we will have an, have that opportunity. I think this is the report section, so I can wait. Uh, well, actually, it's the next one. So other uh, business announcements. So Minnie, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Chair Paul. Um, what I wanted to just get some feedback on is, um, you know, as we're developing some of the sustainability codes, um, and uh, looking at what will be helpful and useful for the commissioners. Uh, one of the ideas we were exploring was perhaps uh, taking a look at um, some sustainable buildings um, you know, that have been built uh, in Essequah and in, in the region. Uh, Bullet Center is one of them and they um, arrange tours and some, so, but they, due to COVID they limited to about 10 people. So we were wondering if, um, you all were interested in touring some, some buildings that are sustainable, those may be local ones, because then you can kind of see what a LEED certified means on the ground as you kind of debate those discussions. Um, you know, we had a good meeting with the Swedish folks and their buildings are carbon neutral. You know, what do they really mean? On, and, and so that idea we're exploring, but we wanted to kind of get a sense from you all if you were interested in a tour uh, if, and we, we haven't figured out the logistics, so obviously if it's more than four commissioners, we have to do it and notice. I know there's a lot of meetings on your agenda and with the holidays coming up and all that. Um, so just, you know, you don't have to answer us now, but if you can, or if you're ready to say you've nod your head or, or say yes, maybe. Okay, sounds like there is general interest. Um, so we'll continue to develop that and share with you some details um, on when. And now it's getting darker earlier, you know, winter's not really the great time to do, be doing these, but if it, it happens to be during, is there a general preference after the work day? Yes. If I might speak, I, I would say, yeah. our, I guess our planning policy time, I don't know if it's available for everybody, but um, 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m. I mean, if we're talking local, we're all local. Yeah, it, it's just being outside in the dark and, you know, rainy weather is a, is a little tricky thing, but um, okay, so you, you, everyone prefers after uh, uh, in the evening time frame? It, it's, it's easier, but if, if, if the daytime is all that's possible with some, with some uh, early warning, I can make it happen. I second that. I'm available after two. Okay. Great. So we'll we'll keep thinking of that and and uh, share with you as we develop more details. Okay. Excellent. And with that, uh, any other comments for the good or the order before we close out? 
Okay, hearing none, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn at 736. Thank That's you all. another record inside of an hour, almost inside of an hour. I think it's like the fourth fourth meeting we've had that's been inside of an hour. That's just amazing. Just stick right. my name on there as presenter and you're guaranteed. All right. <laughs> and, and great job to Kristen for presenting all of this in, in such a really good way. So, you know, that goes a long way. It was well presented and, and organized too. And very that. efficient discussion, very good points from yeah. you all. I looked at that packet and I thought we're going to be here till midnight. <laughs> All right. Well, good night, y'all. Thank you very much for coming and have a great weekend.